So last week, uh, I watched some YouTube videos, I did some Googling, and I made a list of the top seven gaming keyboards that I saw recommended. So I bought them all, and in today's video, I wanna test them, review them, and rank them. So here's what you're gonna find. For each of these seven keyboards, first, a 30 second overview of the keyboard, super brief, like deadly brief. And then, a sound test for each keyboard, and then, my 30 second review. Did I like it? Did I not? How does it sound? How does it feel? And at the tail end, I will sum up with my overall thoughts and recommendations for what I think the best gaming keyboard might actually be. Coming in at number seven on our list is the Corsair K70 TKL. Corsair is obviously a huge gaming brand, and the K70 is one of their flagship keyboards. It features a durable aluminum frame, per key RGB settings, a detachable USB Type-C cable. I do love detachable cables. Some fancy pants media keys, a scroll wheel for changing your volume on the fly, and it offers Cherry MX switch options. I grabbed the Cherry MX Speed Silver switches, though you can get, of course, some uh, tactile, some Cherry Reds, some Cherry Silent Reds as well on Amazon, and the Corsair K70 clocks in at roughly $100 to $120, depending on which switches you get. At the bottom of the pile, unfortunately, is the Corsair K70. I give it a five out of 10. And the biggest reason why, it just feels cheap. Yeah, I like cherry switches, I, I got the Speed Silvers, they don't feel speedy. The entire thing just feels a little cheap and also sounds a little cheap. Space bars are readily scratchy, etc. I actually like the shape of the case, although it is also very lightweight, by the way. Brushed aluminum, I like the shape, except for the very corners, which are surprisingly sharp. You could injure somebody with that. You could commit crimes with this keyboard. Media keys work, the scroll wheel works. It's fine for 100 to 120 bucks, but I definitely think we can do better. And the entire thing just kind of feels cheap. Number six on my list is the Razer Black Widow V3. The Black Widow offers a few different sizes of their mechanical keyboards, all of which have RGB. They should come with a wrist rest, as well as some Razer switch options, of which I chose the proprietary Razer Yellow linear switch. It too has a nice little scroll wheel. You can program macros right on the keyboard and maybe a few other small features, which I forgot. And last, the Razer Black Widow does weigh in at roughly $100, although it's quite often discounted down to about $80 to $90 when you find it on Amazon. The Razer is gonna grab a rating of six out of 10, slightly better than the Corsair. It too feels a little bit cheap. Razer switches, generally okay. The Razer yellows are okay. Spacebar is still a little rattly and scratchy and cheap feeling. But overall, the sound is more consistent, for sure, than the Corsair K70 over there. Everything works, the you know volume, wheel, 
Uh, one tiny thing I actually like about the Razor Black Widow is the function key. You press function and it highlights what you can do, the settings you can change for RGB and macros and all that stuff. It's a very small thing, but I really like that. Again, sounds better for sure than the Corsair K70. Still, we can do a little bit better, even at like 90 to to $100. Coming in at number five is the Red Dragon K580. It is a much more budget-friendly keyboard at around 60 to 70 US dollars. It also has a scroll wheel for volume, some media keys, as well as a few extra programmable macro keys up at the top left of the keyboard. And aside from having its logo on the top plate, it also has a little bit of RGB side lighting just to light up your desk that much more. The K580 offers a few no-name brand switches. I meant to purchase the brown tactile switches, but I accidentally clicked on blue and did not find out until I recorded these sound tests. <sighs> Let's sigh. Sorry, not sorry. I accidentally grabbed the clickies. Enjoy. The Red Dragon K580 is gonna get a 6.5 out of 10. So honestly, if it weren't for one thing, it would get an eight out of 10. And that is the spring ping. This very metallic pingy sound. Once you notice it, you can't unnotice it again. It actually feels pretty nice considering how much of a budget keyboard this is. And yeah, I should have got brown instead of blue switches. And did that on accident. It still sounds pretty good and feels pretty good outside of that metallic pingy noise. Also, one more negative thing, these keys up here, like these macro keys and the program thing, it feels terrible. Like they're wobbly, they don't press it, there's no click, like it's, it feels really bad. It feels really terrible, almost like they're broken or something. Media keys feel much better, they work fine. Scroll wheel there, sounds and feels great, except for that spring ping, which gets it a 6.5 out of 10, else it would probably be in like the eight. By the way, it has side lighting, cool. Numero cuatro is the Ducky One Three. The One Three is the successor to the Ducky One Two, and it's the first hot swappable keyboard from Ducky. Although it does offer several genuine Cherry MX switch options, I chose the Cherry MX Reds. The One Three is a much more premium sounding and feeling keyboard with extra sound dampening in the keyboard itself, a few extra switches to control your in-key rollover options right on the back of the keyboard, upgraded stabilizers, a very nice corded cable with a fun little rubber cable thing. And of course, you don't have to get the ugly yellow 100% sized Ducky One Three. They have several 60, 65%, and a few other size options as well. The Ducky One Three, solid seven out of 10. I literally like everything about this keyboard with the exception of the space bar. The cherry reds sound great on here. You could definitely tell there's foam. It's You could definitely feel it modded. Stabilizers are great, except for the space bar, which is twice as loud and obnoxious as it should be. It's very hollow sounding. It's very like you're hammering a piece of wood. Everything else sounds one way, space bar sounds different. Now, Features are great. I love the cable. This part right here is just, these are fun. I do wish this were a little bit closer to the edge instead of in the middle of the keyboard because it's kind of hard to plug in. 
but you only have to do that once, really. Sounds great, feels great, except for that space. Oh, and I actually don't like the yellow, but they do offer several different designs. If I had to do over again, I'd probably get the 65% size. It'd be much better than 100%. Overall, looks great, feels great, except for that space bar, which is kind of driving me insane. Seven out of 10. Top three, please. Coming in at the third spot is the budget-friendly Techwear Phantom. I've had the full-sized Phantom 104 version for about a year, but they also make a TKL version as well. The best thing about the Techwear is the price tag. At under $40, you can get yourself a nice gaming mechanical keyboard with Otimu switches, generally red or blue. And outside of the RGB backlighting, there's not a whole lot else that comes to this keyboard. Although I will say it does have a fiberglass PCB and an aluminum frame that actually feels nice and heavy and sturdy. Eh, there you go. Did I mention it's only 40 bucks? Top three, baby. Techwear Phantom, <laughs> 7.5 out of 10. The reason it's over there for me is because I've been using this for like a year for my second computer for gaming. I really like it. So does it have cheap Otimu Red switches in it? Yeah. Is it one third the cost of like the Corsair K70 and some of these like Steel Series keyboards? Yeah. And it sounds and feels better. What do you want from me? Yeah, it's cheap switches. It's a cheap keyboard. It's heavier than the, some of these other gaming keyboards as well. And it's $40, are you kidding me? I would rather type and game on this keyboard than the Razer, than the Corsair, than the Ducky even. I'm not gonna lie, it just sounds and feels better, man. And it's $40. Does it have any fancy features? No, literally none. I do wish I had like a scroll wheel or something, but it's not terrible. I don't know what else to say. It's $40. Coming in as the runner up in this video, the number two spot, the Steel Series Apex Pro. The Apex Pro is the top of the line keyboard from Steel Series, and you can actually find it in a bunch of different versions, different sizes, wired, wireless, although it'll cost you a lot more. You can find it with gaming mouse combos and all sorts of stuff. So aside from the smooth feeling wrist rest and the scroll wheel at the top right of the keyboard, the Apex Pro comes with its very own customizable programmatical OLED screen right on the keyboard in the top right. It's actually really fun. And what about the switches, you say? Well, it's the Steel Series Omni Point switch, which basically just means that you can actually customize whether it's light, whether it's heavy, you can customize the actuation force using the Steel Series software, which is available on Windows and Mac. And you can also use that software to do, well, a bunch of other things, like put Pete in the OLED screen. Ooh, sweet. I want more Pete on my keyboard. How much, you ask? Well, the Apex Pro does weigh in at roughly $170 to $190, depending on which version you get. Oof, I know. Is it worth it? Let's find out after the sound test. Apex Pro runner up at 8.5 out of 10. Now we're starting to get into the whole, like feels like a premium keyboard range. This keyboard and the OmniPoint switches sounds and feels fantastic. It feels great. I do wish the case were a little bit heavier. It's, it's still pretty lightweight, but it's still, I mean, it's still solid. It's still built like a truck. Scroll wire works fine. Teeny tiny, by the way. This little screen right here, the LED screen, it's just fun. I don't know what you want from me. Customizing this turned out to be pretty easy and I had a lot of fun with it. 
I don't know if that's worth paying extra for, but it didn't hurt. Now, the OmniPoint switches that I mentioned, which you customize via the software. By the way, software's great. I'll just say that first and foremost. Windows, Mac, works great, customize everything, easy to use, surprisingly. Software, A+. That's, that's part of the 8.5 rating on this keyboard. The only downside, those OmniPoint switches, the difference is very subtle. Customizing the actuation force, like light versus heavy, I, I played around with that stuff and the difference is really subtle. I'm sure it's there to some degree, but it's really subtle. That said, it still feels great. Feels great, sounds great all around. This is a premium typing and gaming experience. By the way, at not much more money than some of these other keyboards. It is more expensive, but not that much more. And it sounds and feels way better than anything we've seen up until this point, except for the number one spot. Now, the moment you have all been waiting for, the number one gaming keyboard that I have tested right here, the Wooting 2, H-E. This Wooting keyboard is special, my friends. It is an analog keyboard, which is a little complicated, so allow me to read from their website. The Wooting 2 detects full switch motion, as in it's not just binary, black or white, up and down, pressed and not, it actually registers the entire keystroke on a scale from the very top to the very bottom. And of course, just like the OmniPoint switches, you can customize how fast it actuates via their software in the browser, as well as downloadable Mac and Windows versions. You can customize the actuation force from 0.1 millimeter all the way to 4.0 millimeter. You can make it light, you can make it heavy, you can make it awesome. The Wooting 2 also came with a bunch of really amazing things from their team, including a Wooting postcard, no joke, as well as a canvas handle for the keyboard. Not sure why you'd carry it around like that on a keychain, but there you go. And of course, you can also customize the RGB as well as some other very fancy future features for gamers. And I'm not even going to tell you about right here, but you can read about on their website, which, by the way, is the only place that you can grab the Wooting 2. Yeah, it's a little bit pricey at roughly 200 bucks, but you get a lot for that $200. And while you can find a link to this keyboard in the description below right now, at the time of this recording, it's available for pre-order only. Although they did send me one to test out, so let's hear that right now. Hallelujah. Number one, the winner take all, the Wooting 2. I could probably rave on this thing for like 20 minutes. I'll spare you the 20 minute version, but it's just a phenomenal keyboard. It's probably the best mechanical keyboard, period, I have ever touched, period. I love it, period. I did find two negative things to say. I'll save those to the end. But first, sounds phenomenal, feels phenomenal. You can customize everything via their software in the browser, by the way. They have downloadable versions too, but you can customize in the browser. Ah! They have pre-made RGB settings, um, pre-made analog switch settings, right? You can make it light, softer. It's less subtle, more noticeable than the SteelSeries OmniPoint switches that I have over there. It's fantastic. It's just the keyboard of the future. And I really do mean that. This is just a phenomenal thing. It's a work of art. Plenty of features, obviously, like 10 times more features than any other keyboard I've tested. Feels phenomenal. Sounds really great. Love the core. Love the cable. Love the team. Love the extras in the box. Like everything. This is it. And it's worth it. It does cost more. It's like 200 bucks plus. It's worth it. It's really cool. If you're into mechanical keyboards, you have to own this keyboard. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun. Now, I did find two negative things to say. Number one, analog switches, they're not like tactile. If you want a tactile option or a clicky switch option, you, they don't make it, right? Because it's not that type of keyboard. It's an analog keyboard. Little nitpicky things, right? If you wanted a tactile, doesn't matter. That said, by the way, I've been typing on this for three days straight, and it still feels great. <laughs> like I work at my computer full time. still feels great. I don't need a tactile switch for this. Uh, and other than that, I would have got a different size. This is 60%. I would have preferred the TKL, which they'd sent me a different size, but you just 
disorder different size. It's right there, right? Just for fun, let's do a sound test comparison, some tapping, some typing, back to back to back with all these gaming keyboards so you can hear what they sound like versus one another. And then after that, I'll give you my final recommendations on what you should buy. Let me wrap this up with my general recommendations here based on these seven gaming keyboards. Number one, if you're on a budget and you just don't have the money, that Techware Phantom for $40 sounds and feels better than most keyboards at like two to three times that much. Cheap Otimu Reds or Blues, they're not terrible. And no features for sure, right? But it's $40 and it actually sounds and performs really, really well. That said, if you want the best and you have the money, that Wooting keyboard is the keyboard of the future. It's just phenomenal. Highly recommend this for a bajillion different reasons that I've already talked about, right? But credit where credit's due, the Steel, Steel, Puries, the Steel Series Apex Pro is also fantastic, right? It also sounds good, feels good. It's not as cool, not as good as the Wooting, but it does have that LED screen, which adds quite a lot, in my opinion. And that's all I got. So feel free to rail me in the comments if I said anything stupid in this video or for buying the clicky switches on accident, or if you have other recommendations that you would like to suggest to anybody watching this video, comment below this video and I'll see you next time. Hashtag like, comment, or subscribe, or whatever else I'm supposed to say to end this. Maybe I'll stop talking now. Happy clacking.